Young Einstein, zany Australian comedy classic starring the unique and enjoyably quirky Yahoo Serious as a fictionalised version of Einstein, be that an Australian one. Released in 1988, Young Einstein focuses on Einstein as a young man living in the 1900s, where in this made-up version, he's the son of an apple farmer in Tasmania, Australia. That part's at the very bottom for all those non-Australians out there. Young Einstein has a love for physics, and after discovering the theory of E equals MC squared by trying to split atoms of beer in order to make beer bubbles, he takes his new theory to Sydney, where he embarks on many wacky adventures, finds himself in a romance, and also invents rock and roll and surfing in this strange but enjoyable Aussie romp. You know, I get asked to do this movie a lot. People always say to me, why don't you do 10 things you didn't know about young Einstein? I mean, you should, you're Australian, aren't you? So... <laughs> well, here's a newsflash. Here in Australia, people don't just watch Mad Max, Crocodile Dundee, and Young Einstein. We've actually discovered other movies too. But regardless, what the heck, today we're going to look into 10 things that you didn't know about Young Einstein. Yep, I'm gonna do it for you. Let's check it out. Einstein's had always been apple farmers. And that's what my dad had planned for me. But I just couldn't get the hang of it. Look at this, will you? Tasmanian devils. Eat anything, they will. <laughs> G'day, mate. Number 10. It started with a serious documentary. The story of young Einstein is basically the story of Yahoo Sirius, and to understand that we have to go back to the very beginning. Sirius, whose birth name is Greg Gomez Pede, was born in New South Wales in 1953. His creative flair started when he attended the National Arts School in Sydney, where he would don the name Yahoo Sirius, along with his iconic crazy hairdo. Sirius stated that his hairstyle is a traditional Australian surfy haircut, a look that came from male Aussie surfers never brushing their hair. And what an impressive do it is. Just turn upside down at the start of the week and just rub anything into it. Then every morning I wake up, it's a little bit more messy than when I went to sleep the night before. So, you know, it's always a different, you know, it's been green and blue and all kinds of colour. It happens to be red now, so. But seriously though, is it just me or does he look like a hybrid of David Tennant and Drop Dead Fred? Sirius ended up getting expelled from the art school, where he then turned his attentions to filmmaking and made his first film. But unlike his other movies, this one wasn't a wacky comedy. With the help of the Australian Film Institute, he co-produced, edited, directed and co-wrote his first movie, Coal Town, at just 21 in 1977. Coal Town was a look into the social and political history of coal mining, a far cry from young Einstein. But the fact that Sirius could write produce, edit, and direct proved that he had quite the talent in filmmaking. Number 9. Inspiration for Young Einstein Sirius had been working on a script called The Great Galoot, which was a fictionalised story about a young Australian who invents rock and roll. The Einstein element came from a trip to the Amazon, where while travelling down the Amazon River, he saw a local wearing a t-shirt that featured Albert Einstein poking his tongue out. This imagery really struck a chord with Sirius, and a spark went off in his head, and possibly his hair too, as he then decided to make the character in The Great Galoot a fictionalised Australian version of Albert Einstein. And so he and co-writer David Wright reworked the script into Young Einstein. Number 8. Filmed on an extremely low budget Just like his previous movie Coal Town, Yahoo Sirius acted as co-producer, co-writer, co-editor and director of Young Einstein, as well as starring as the movie's main lead. Sirius managed to get some backing from the Australian Film Institute, but the budget was still really low. So low, in order to generate funds, Sirius had to borrow the cameras and sell his car. And to further save funds, his mum cooked for the cast and crew. By early 1984, about an hour of the movie had been filmed, but in order for filming to continue, the production needed to somehow generate more money. 
so young Einstein really was made on a shoestring and sticky tape budget. Number 7. The Troubled Original Cut In order to get more funding, Sirius sold the incomplete film to an American company called Film Accord, which managed to raise the budget with $2 million, and filming then recommenced over a year later after the first hour was filmed, with filming now taking place in 1985. This leads us to the infamous first version of Young Einstein. Now apparently there really was issues with this first cut of the movie. For a start, Film Accord was so unimpressed with the movie, they took legal action, claiming that this wasn't the movie that was pitched to them, and wanted their money back and the footage that had been shot. But thankfully the issue was settled out of court. Even Yahoo Sirius himself wasn't too pleased with this early cut of Young Einstein. So, that could have been the end of Young Einstein right there. But thankfully, it wasn't. Number 6. Warner Brothers Save the Day An executive of the Australian media company Roadshow, who not only distributed Mad Max, but also distributed a lot of American movies in Australia, saw an early cut of Young Einstein, and saw potential in Young Einstein, and purchased the movie from Film Accord. So Roadshow, now in charge, contacted Warner Brothers, who agreed to distribute Young Einstein internationally, as well as film new scenes, which then further boosted the movie's budget to $5 million, hoping that Young Einstein would be the next Crocodile Dundee. Production and filming on Young Einstein would recommence yet again in 1987, with one hour of reshoots being filmed to replace older footage from the first cut, including a new ending, as well as the movie getting re-edited and re-scored. Warner Brothers must have really believed in the project, as they would spend a further $8 million marketing the movie in the States. So it was a long time coming, consisting of financial issues, setbacks, lawsuits, and disappointments, but Young Einstein as we know it was finally created. Even the real Einstein himself probably would have struggled. And he was a really smart guy with a moustache and shit. Number 5. The Music of Young Einstein Something that really elevated this new version of Young Einstein to the old version was all the rocking tracks featured in the film, many of which have gone on to be considered as Australian classics, including Dumb Things by Paul Kelly and Great Southern Land by Icehouse. I swear it's one of the most Australian sounding songs ever. And of course, Mental as Anything with a rendition of rock and roll music. I find their music video of the song to be quite unique, as it shows clips from the movie, as well as the band performing in front of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, along with a herd of sheep, a koala, and a cockatoo. You know, just in case you didn't realise this was Australia. As well as... Um... A ballet dancer, for some reason. Sure, why not? I'm down with this. Even Yahoo Sirius himself provided a few songs for the movie. Despite all the efforts and different duties that Sirius provided for young Einstein, I appreciate how humble he was, as he explained that the movie was still a group effort, and that it's more like he's just the front man of a band. It's very much a collaborative thing. Uh, I guess I'm the, like, like in a rock band, I'm the guy that stands up with the microphone up the front. Number 4. Alternative Title To market the movie, this poster was put together, which shows Einstein inventing rock and roll. I can remember looking at this poster as a kid at a video store. No, I had never seen the film before, but I thought to myself, this guy looks crazy. Look at him, he looks insane. What's going on with his hair? The poster is electric and full of energy and lets you know that you're in for one unique kooky experience. However, in some parts of the world, the movie was retitled to Einstein Jr. This actually puts a different spin on the premise, as this doesn't sound as much like a fictionalised version of Einstein himself, but rather the offspring of Einstein. Unless in some locations, Young translates to Junior, I wonder if some people thought that this movie was about Einstein's kid. But either way, Yahoo Sirius had just landed. So much so, he even featured on the cover of Time Magazine and Mad Magazine. Wow, that's quite a contrasting combo right there. The question is, how would the States take to young Einstein? Number 3. The Critics Didn't Get the Gag 
Young Einstein did very well in Australia when it was released in December 1988. It hit a chord with critics and audiences, and instantly became a well-loved classic. In fact, the movie did so well in Australia, it even won an Australian Film Institute Award. I guess it didn't hurt that it was relatable to the Aussie audience thanks to its use of Australian humour. However, that same humour was also what hurt the movie in the US, as the critics just couldn't understand young Einstein. When the movie was released in the States in August 1989, it was met with bewildered critics. Roger Ebert described it as a one-joke movie, only he didn't laugh the first time, noting that there wouldn't be much appeal to American audiences thanks to its Australian settings, and that the Australian humour just does not travel well. Somehow I didn't find the movie as funny as I expected to, and a lot of it wasn't intrinsically funny, but simply consisted of a funny guy with strange hair doing crazy things. The Washington Post called young Einstein, quote, dumber than a bowling ball, which I think is quite unfair. Bowling balls are actually quite smart. You know, the way they knock those pins down and all. And just like Roger Ebert, the Washington Post also questioned the movie's appeal. And the New York Times felt that the movie was an uneven series of sketches. I've also noticed in a few programs that were talking about the movie at the time, just couldn't quite get over Yahoo Sirius's name or his iconic hairstyle. Albert Einstein. What kind of a name is that for a scientist? Probably a better name than Yahoo Sirius. Now, the other part of your persona that I'm admiring <laughs> with some, some glee is, is your hair. Now, you wouldn't look good with this haircut. <laughs> However, a clip featuring American kids whom had just seen the movie seemed to really love it. Like, they were totally on board with the film. It was the best movie. I loved the rock and roll. Young Einstein would nearly make $25 million on a budget of $5 million, so it did nearly quadruple its money, but it still was not a massive success either. Yes, sadly, it seems that when it comes to box office numbers, Young Einstein wasn't going to be of the same caliber as Crocodile Dundee. But what other tricks did Yahoo Sirius have up his sleeve? Number two, Yahoo's next movies. In the wake of Young Einstein, Yahoo Sirius did find some popularity in the States, where he would end up hosting a segment on MTV. However, his follow-up film didn't come out until 1993 with Reckless Kelly, in which Sirius does with Ned Kelly what he does with Albert Einstein, make a fictionalized comical version of the character, in a weird caper which sees a modern-day Ned Kelly go to Hollywood. I can remember back in the day, there was a lot of hype about this movie, or at least there was here in Australia. But I think once it came out, it just didn't strike a chord with people like Young Einstein did. I can remember watching it as a kid, and I just couldn't get into it. The movie looked good. I mean, visually, it looked like a polished Hollywood movie, but it was just missing something. Then in the year 2000, Sirius made his third, and thus far, last movie with Mr. Accident. And from memory, this one really went under the radar and pretty much no one was talking about it, and there was very little marketing. I can remember watching it at a friend's house when I was a teenager, and yeah, look, I wasn't a fan. It felt like a movie aimed at small children. It kind of felt a little play schoolish. And there was some plot about an evil company selling eggs that are laced with nicotine or something like that. It was really weird and random, and to me, it was kind of forgettable. Look, maybe that was my teenager self being a snob and thinking that I'm too cool for school. But that said, Mr. Accident has pretty much dropped off the map and disappeared. Number 1. Yahoo vs. Yahoo After Mr. Accident, that was pretty much the last we heard of Yahoo Sirius. However, a few months after the release of Mr. Accident, a lawsuit took place with the search engine Yahoo, claiming that it was infringing on his public persona name of Yahoo. But the case was thrown out of court, as Sirius couldn't prove that he himself sells items that are directly under the brand name of Yahoo, nor could he prove that he suffered financial harm from the search engine. The Yahoo search engine itself would more or less go on to be wiped out by Google anyway. I guess it's a good thing that he wasn't called Google Sirius. These days, we rarely hear about Yahoo Sirius, other than the odd story here and there. According to Wikipedia, he's recently hit hard times, which sucks. I think it's a shame that he somewhat disappeared into the night, never to be seen again. Maybe with the right direction and guidance, he could have been an amazing filmmaker. 
Maybe he still can be. Maybe the best is yet to come. But all said and done, he did give the world young Einstein. Which once again, does seem to be a film with a large fan base, as I get requested it all the time. Some filmmakers can make 50 movies and every single one of them could be rubbish. But making one truly great one is difficult, and at least Sirius did give us a beloved movie. Of which he pretty much did make on his own, with many obstacles and hurdles to overcome. In fact, according to his website, Yahoo Sirius was the first Australian to write, direct, produce, and star in a feature film, which is quite an accomplishment in itself. So in essence, Yahoo Sirius is an important person when it comes to the history of cinema in the land down under. And so movie fans all over the world will always be able to have and celebrate young Einstein. So, yeah, I kind of feel like this episode has a sad ending. I'm sorry about that, I didn't mean for that to happen. So maybe it's time to go back and give this movie some love and revisit young Einstein when Yahoo Sirius was at the top of his game. Anyway, I'm Minty, and who would have thought that E equals MC squared came from trying to make beer with bubbles? <laughs> that is so Australian. See ya!